Hi guys, and welcome to the Pompey vs Sunderland match review. So, Sunderland have just got absolutely battered away from home at Fram Park. And uh, I won't lie to you, this is going to be a very, very short and sweet match review. And not just because we lost, of course not. But um, I'm just finding this game very, very hard to dissect. Now, this isn't an excuse, because both teams had to play on the same pitch. But the pitch itself was absolutely shocking. You know, I was saying 15 minutes into the game, this should be called off. You know, the first half it was terrible in terms of, you know, on either flank, it was the ball, the ball was being held up. You couldn't pass the ball. You literally could not pass the ball. But, to Pompey's credit, they sort of adjusted to the circumstances a hell of a lot better than we could. They were still, you know, going for it. Their attitude was second to none. They just looked like they wanted it more. Second balls they were winning everything. You know, but at times, as I say, it just looked frigging dangerous. It really looked dangerous. You know, the ball was just stopping. It was holding up. Like it, it, it was plays that were trying to put the foot through the ball, and it's moving less than a meter because the the rain and the the, the level of um, the, the rain that hit the pitch and is staying and sticking on the pitch, uh, just was not allowing the ball to run freely. You know, and it got to the point where though second half it was even worse. It, it was terrible. There's some footage online at the minute. You know, it's showing um, the groundsman. You know, trying to. You know, trying to sort of brush and rake the uh, <laughs> the water and the rain off the edges and the corners of the pitch. And it's a joke. It is an absolute joke, the amount of water that was on that pitch and, and was allowed to play. But again, th that isn't an excuse. That honestly is not an excuse. I'm just saying, and this is why I'm finding it difficult to dissect a game of football, because although it was 4-0, of course it's a great result for Pompey. I'm sure they'll, they'll say that they were able to play to the best of their ability because they got the, the four goals, they got the three points. But for us, you know, there was no way we could play the game anywhere near we would like to because we couldn't play our game on that pitch. Um, and again, that isn't an excuse because Pompey, again, they managed to you know, adjust to the pitch and the, to the conditions, whereas we just simply didn't. You know, They were winning second balls, their attitude was second to none. Um, our defending, my God, for, well, for all of them really, all the goals were absolutely goddamn atrocious. We absolutely collapsed, particularly in that first half. You know, since the first went in, you know, um, I feel like Harness on the edge of the box, he wasn't closed down close enough. He had too much space, took a slight deflection and went in. You know, the, the second was an absolute abomination. You know, they were giving us that high press, which was always going to be difficult. But we're trying to do little triangles around the back, you know, when they're doing this high press. And the ball's not frigging moving. Do you know what I mean? So we're going to lose it. It was literally like watching... You know, a frigging you know a Sunday league game at times, but again, <laughs> again, Pompey aren't going to complain. So it's a it's a difficult one to take because all I can say is, which is probably the only positive, is that none got injured. But at the same time, you have to question the lads in terms of their commitment to the game because they just looked down and out after the first goal went in. They seemed to just have the heads down and they kind of give up, whereas Pompey just weren't stopping, they were relentless, despite the terrible conditions. So again, you need to give it to them. You know, I think some of the the, the team selection I would have done differently. You know, how Dan Neal is finding himself on the bench is absolutely criminal. Some of the, some of the just things in general, like for example, the only couple of chances we had in the first half was two set pieces. And for some reason, Luke O'Neill's taken and one of them hit the wall and one of them went straight down the middle. Which I just don't understand. I don't understand why he's on him when you've got someone like Elliot Embleton on the pitch. I just don't get it. You know, of course, McGeady was injured before the game, so he's not. Uh, he didn't play today. We just had so little going forward. Ross Stewart I forgot he was there for half the game. You know, we've got Embleton up top with, uh, of course, um, Diaku starting. Who, you know, the handful of times he did get the ball again, particularly in the first half, it, it was just kind of taking him one man, and then he want to go back and do it again. But again, he's a he's a lad too. You know, he clearly has very good technical ability and dribbling ability. But you can't dribble on a pitch like that. It's like trying to dribble, you know, in a swimming pool. It's not going to happen. And you know, for for one of their goals as well, I think that in the build up to it, you know, all nine he goes in for a sort of fifty fifty. But you know, all nine's done this kind of thing before where he he's trying to play for it. He's kind of he's gone down. You know, he's holding his face and everything. He's acting as though he's he's, he's been hit hard. You know, on the replay, you can see that. He hasn't really been touched, he's gone down, he, he's trying to play the referee and he stays on the ground throughout the entirety of the build-up to their goal. I think it was the second or third goal, I can't remember now. But either way, that's a very, very frustrating thing to see. You know, their third goal, I think it was, is when they whipped the free kick in and it seems to have come off Sirkin. 
and he's pointing the back of the net. It just, it just wasn't our day, you know, um, and, and that's going to happen. But it's just in the manner in which, of course, we've lost that game is absolutely horrible. He's gutting. And again, I apologise that this isn't really much of a match review at all. And it isn't just because we lost. It's just, um, it was a very, very poor game for the neutral, regardless of it being, you know, a four-goal game with four goals to, to the one side. Because the game of football itself, it was terrible because of the conditions. Um, but I, I can only keep saying I'm not using that as an excuse because we're both sides are on the same pitch, aren't they? But yeah, so I suppose the only positive really is that we didn't get any injuries. We're still in second, joint with Wigan. The only thing that's very, very frustrating here is that, of course, a 5-0 win against Cheltenham is almost eradicated. Not not the points, of course, but the goal difference we made. So of course, we scored five on Tuesday and we're letting four today, which is just... It's just shit, really. It really is shit. And, uh, yeah, I think we, we looked poor. Even, you know, in the centre of the pitch where there wasn't, like, so much waterlog, and it, and it weren't as waterlogged, should I say. We, we just couldn't string a pass together. Nothing were coming off. We were so slow in our build-up. And I think it, we just we just could not get used to those conditions. Um, and, and that's very, very frustrating because Portsmouth did. So, uh, yeah, again, apologies that this isn't much of a match review. It's uh, just me sitting down and acknowledging the game because I, I am really struggling to um, dissect this one uh, because of conditions, you know, Pompey and Sunderland, they've, they've given us so many good games over the last two or three years and unfortunately that wasn't really allowed to happen because of the conditions, you know, you know Pompey play a certain style, you know, of course, they're, they're, like I say, they're not going to moan because they won 4-0 um, but, and we play a certain style and they probably should have been a lot better uh, of a watch but instead it was... It was a terrible, terrible game. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible to watch. And I can only feel sorry. And my, general, my heart goes out to the Sunderland fans that made a huge journey down to be in the pissing rain and to watch our team get absolutely battered. Absolutely battered. But uh, fair play to Pompey. Of course, they deserved it. To uh, play in those kind of conditions and still come away with a 4 0 win, you know, you have to give it to them. So fair play to them. And as I said in the preview to this game, it, it, it's gonna. It's always a difficult game at Fram Park. You know, it's, and things are always raised against. Yeah, you know, when it's Pompey Sunderland, because we have managed to sort of build this bit of a rivalry. And they also said, you know, it would be typical that they get their first win in over a month. Um, and that could kickstart their, their season. I think this could be their uh, sort of springboard um, up for the rest of the season for them. You know, they've got some very good players. And I think it was just a case of things clicking for them. I think it might do now. So, uh, you know, all the best to them. But we need to absolutely book our ideas up for the next game. You know, hopefully we can rebuild some confidence in the in the Papa John's and then sort ourselves out for the weekend um, or the following league game anyway because that was nowhere near good enough. I, it was the first time of the season that I genuinely did kind of question the application of the lads because the Reds went down after one goal and that's, I'm sorry, that's just absolutely unacceptable. But that'll be my thoughts on the game. Apologies, it isn't quite as in-depth as it usually is. I just can't be bothered, to be honest with you. I can't be bothered at this point. But uh, yeah, if you've somehow enjoyed Please hit the like button for me. It made me feel at least somewhat better, I guess. Um, let me know what you thought of the game in the comments down below. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Have a good one. See you later.